Dust Collection and the Laguna B-Flux Dust Collector. Let's jump right into this one, guys. So as you can see, I clearly already own a Laguna Dust Collector, and this model happens to be the C-Flux version, and it's a 110 volt unit, and the thing works perfect alongside my CNC machine. And when I originally purchased this unit, I figured I would use it throughout the entire shop, but I do have a challenge that I run into on a daily basis, and we're gonna address that today. My table saw is right here just out of camera view, and I store most of my other dust creating tools over here along this wall. So anytime I wanna use one of these tools, I have to go dig that dust collector out from behind the CNC machine and wheel it over here and hook it up to one of these units. What are the odds that I actually take the time and come over here and do that while working on a project? That's right, I never do. So here's how I plan to tackle and address my weak dust collection system with my other accessories in the shop. I'm gonna go ahead and utilize the C-Flux system for the Avid CNC machine, and I went ahead and picked up a smaller version. This is the Laguna B-Flux, and again, this is a 110 volt version. It's on caster, so it's mobile as well, and it's probably about half the size of that C-Flux, so I'm really excited to get this one unboxed and assembled, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna utilize this in the shop. Now, if you're a giant ogre like me, you can go ahead and manhandle this box up onto the workbench. That way you're not crouched over like the hunchback of Notre Dame trying to get this thing out of the box. And as you can see, Laguna has done an excellent job with their packaging. I was actually able to fit this entire box in the back seat of my luxury midsize sedan. Luxury, don't forget, luxury. But all joking aside, they really do a fantastic job with their packaging. So you're just gonna go ahead and lay out the frame components, the motor assembly, the manual, and all the hardware. And if you're anything like me, I literally have a pile of cardboard probably taller than Mount Everest in my backyard. So whenever I have a big box like this, I try to take my time and cut it down right there on the spot so I can get that in the recycle bin. All right, let the fun times begin. Go ahead and lay the main base down on a flat surface and pay attention to the correct orientation. And Laguna has done a great job labeling each package with what components the hardware go to. And first up will be these casters. You will notice that there are four casters at each corner. You are going to install the bolts into the framework and you can go ahead and tighten those down right now. Time for a quick pro tip. Although Laguna does a fantastic job and provides you with China's finest tooling, do not use it, it's junk. Go ahead and grab your nice wrenches. And a thing that I noticed that was kind of odd right here, once you start three of these bolts, you will need to make sure all three are tight so you can swivel the caster and get that last bolt in. Don't let that one fight you. And again, Laguna provides excellent directions on how to assemble this. So moving along, you're gonna go ahead and grab your vertical uprights. And these are clearly marked right and left. And they also mark short and tall. Now, if you don't have a lot of experience assembling machinery like this, whenever you're working with sheet metal components like this that go together, you're gonna wanna always make sure just to leave those bolts snug. You're gonna have to fiddle fart with this thing to get all the holes to line up. If you crank those first initial bolts down so tight, it'll leave you no wiggle room and you'll just be smashing your head off of the table trying to get those other components to start. So again, leave these bolts snug. So there you have it. So long as you follow the instructions and use your own tools to assemble the support structure, it goes together very easy. Now let's get this assembly on the floor and attach the rest of the components. Now, if you're following the directions step by step, this is where they tell you to put the finished assembly down on the floor and rotate the motor and filter on its side. And then you're gonna use four bolts to connect both assemblies. Now, here's where there might be a little confusion. According to those directions that I keep praising, the they are showing the motor and filter not being attached. So pay attention to which way to orient that assembly. And number two, with the filter and motor being attached, I'm not gonna lie, I had to fiddle fart around much longer than I would have liked. And remember those amazing tools I told you to throw away? Go grab those back out of the trash. You're gonna need that microscopic wrench to get these bolts started. So other than that small inconvenience, I was able to get this turd all buttoned up and back up on its casters. 
Now, as you can see here, if I was able to see into the future about five minutes, I would have simply removed this filter and that would have allowed much more access for my big fat ogre hands to get down in there and get those bolts started. And in case you're wondering why I removed the filter from the bottom and moved it up top, I address that later in the video. Now moving right along, simply install the crank handle on the top of the canister filter. This is another feature that I love about these Lagunas. That handle rotates 360 degrees and that's how you agitate and clean out that micro filter. This unit comes with a four inch dust collection port and that will be attached to the top of the assembly using the provided four Phillips head screws. So as you guys can clearly see, assembly of the Laguna B-Flux dust collector was very straightforward and simple. Laguna is not the cheapest product on the market, but what you get is quality, fit, and finish. And they also provide you with this excellent manual. It's full color and really goes over each step in detail. So if you're a little nervous about assembling one of these units, don't be. You saw how easy that was. But since we're talking about assembly, let's go over something really quick. In the instructions, you're gonna see that this section of the unit here did not have the filter or the motor mounted to it. And once you assemble it, they then state that you need to add this filter to the top. However, you guys probably saw in the video, this filter came mounted underneath. Simply remove this band strap clamp right here, pull that unit off, flip it over, put it back on top, reattach the band clamp and then you're going to put your little catch-all bag down here on the bottom super simple now let's get to the part you're all waiting for let's test it out on some of the shop accessories as you can clearly see this thing is going to be perfect for my accessories this thing is manhandling the chips that are flying out of this dewalt planer now another thing to keep in mind when hooking up a dust collection system to a table saw especially this rigid unit. They're not the best at dust collection overall. Some steps you can take to ensure better dust collection would be to silicone all the seams of the sheet metal. And number two, always make sure you're using a zero clearance blade insert. Well, there you have it, folks. I'm really curious. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Overall, I think this is going to be the perfect solution to the challenge of my dust collection in this shop. I'm not a dust collection expert by any means. However, I've been very happy with the Laguna C-Flux and I think this B-Flux is gonna be a great addition to the shop. As you just saw, it worked perfectly fine for what I needed. It's compact and it's mobile. Speaking of compact, I got you covered. This unit's gonna be 48 inches to the top. We are looking at about 30 inches in depth. And it's a very narrow 15 inches. So again, this works perfect. It's mobile, I can keep it in the corner. Anytime I need to use one of my accessories, I can just wheel this right over to the accessory, use it, put it back out of the way. Very easy to change out the bag and empty it and put it back in. Two things that I've seen people complain about, dust collection port being on top. I've seen people flip that to the bottom. Again, I don't have enough time with this unit to let you know whether that's worth changing or not, but now might be a great time to subscribe to the channel so that when I do an update on it, you won't miss it. If you don't want to subscribe, that's fine. Do me a huge favor, hit the like button. That's gonna really help out, help out small channels like mine. Number two, a lot of people complained about excess uh, suction leaking out where the motor mount is to the bottom of the unit here. Now there is a O-ring or a rubber seal between the metal and the mount, and then also between the motor where the motor mounts to the actual mount that goes to the housing. There's also a sealed gasket in there as well. So again, I'm gonna to have to spend a couple months with it to see if it's worth addressing that or not. So again, thank you so much to everybody that follows my channel. And if you've made it this far into the video, congratulations, you have a much longer attention span than I do. And in all honesty, if you guys do wanna help support my small shop, I do have an Amazon affiliate link down below. All the stuff you see me using in my shop, I will have linked down below. It's the same price that you would purchase on Amazon, but I do get a small kickback, which will definitely help me keep creating more content for you guys. I always try my best to upload content to YouTube. It takes an extremely long time to record, film, and edit these, so if you guys would like to see more of my content, make sure you are following all my other socials. I will have those linked below. I primarily post on TikTok a couple times a day, and I also go live. And as always, guys, we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching is going to be the perfect fit and solution. Fucking air heater. Shit.